Welcome to this session on how children acquire language where we are going to discuss some theoretical perspectives. I am Garima Dalal from Jawaharlal Nehru University and we are going to talk about child language acquisition in this session along with certain theories of child language acquisition. We are going to talk about with the behaviorist approach, the mentalist approach, the model of cognitive development and certain key concepts related to cognitive development. We are also going to talk about the four stages of cognitive development today. It is important to enrich our understanding of language as a whole by understanding how language acquisition takes place. Child language acquisition or first language acquisition refers to the process of learning or acquiring a particular language. Acquisition refers to a language being learned naturally as a part of a natural process. On the contrary, learning a language refers to a conscious effort being made to learn a specific language and is seen as an instructional process which is learned by learning its grammar, syntax, pronunciation or vocabulary. There are several approaches to understanding how language learning takes place in the early years of life. Primarily, two approaches study language learning. The first approach is the surface approach where the student intends to complete a task by memorizing and not understanding. The second approach is the deep approach where the student intends to understand by learning. In the second approach, the students uses a set of skills by actively involving themselves with the content or by relating new ideas with his existing or previous knowledge. Learning theories emerged during the 20th century and they were supported by different experiments. We shall begin with discussing some of the theories put forth by several experts that have been used to find out about child's language. They give information about details of language acquisition, especially the nature of developmental stages and the relationship between speech and comprehension. There has been a constant debate on whether language is learned as nature versus nurture. Nature states that language is innate. That is, it is something which happens naturally and over a period of time, we become experts in the language. On the other hand, nurture is imitated just like we imitate or copy other skills like learning to ride a bicycle. Many theories and approaches have emerged over the period of years to study and analyze the process of language acquisition. The leading schools of thought which provide theoretical paradigms for language acquisition are firstly, based on the empiricist or behavioral approach, we have imitation, nativism or behaviorism. The rationalistic or mentalist approach is found in innateness or mentalism. The third approach is the cognitive psychological approach which is termed as cognition. Therefore, these theories may be classified into three major approaches to language learning. B.F. Skinner proposed the behaviorist theory which centered around the child's language based on imitation of adults. Piaget proposed the cognitive theory where language is one aspect of the child's overall intellectual development. Chomsky proposed innateness where he looks at language as an innate capacity. The behavioral school of thought describes language as a connection between stimulus and response. This approach believes that natural responses and behaviors result from acquiring new bonds and associations of stimulus and response gained from experiences. 
Recollecting any information is associated with the idea that tree exists when the individual learnt it. According to the behavioristic approach, learning brings about changes in behavior and takes place if the environmental conditions support it to generate appropriate responses. Therefore, learning is a result of the interaction between an individual and his environment. B.F. Skinner postulated this approach to learning. The work of Pavlov strongly influenced the behaviorists. They studied the behavior which was directly observable through experiments with the salivating dog as a famous example. Several essential characteristics can be noted about the behavioristic approach. They believe in objectively studying the behavior of both animals and humans. They emphasize the environment rather than heredity as a determinant factor for certain behavior. According to the behaviorists, conditioning was the key to understanding behavior comprising of stimulus and response associations which could then be analyzed by scientific method. They also believe that knowledge is learned by associating it with past knowledge. With a study of behavior observation, the behaviorist could predict a tentative response to a behavior. And their experiments and activities thus revolved around observable and measurable behavior patterns which could be studied and appropriate response could be predicted. These Experiments revolved around activities like pressing a button, uttering a word, problem-solving activities, etc. Language acquisition has been thought of as a process of imitating and reproducing with positive reinforcement. It was believed that children learn to speak by copying what they hear around them and after several repeated responses and corrections by the adults around them. According to behaviorists, language learning is a process known as operant conditioning. Now what exactly is operant conditioning, we will get to know in some time. But operant conditioning is also known as reinforcement conditioning, where reinforcement is correlated with the response of the operant or the person being observed in a general sense. In this conditioning, a reward is not given until an appropriate response is received. Now Skinner used the operant conditioning approach to study language learning. The learner, according to him, demonstrates the new behavior first as a response to a system of reward or punishment which finally builds into an automatic response. He demonstrated this learning theory by a simple experiment of putting a hungry rat in a box. In his experiment, a rat was put in a box containing a bar. The rat would press the bar and be rewarded with food. The rat pushes the bar accidentally for the first time. And when the food arrives, he figures out that if he presses the bar again, he might probably receive some food for the second time too. In future experiments, the task was made difficult when the rat only got rewarded with food if he pressed the bar with a light which was flashed. At first, the rat is in a gaze to understand, but eventually learns the trick. The experiment is made even more complicated when the rat presses the bar more than once to receive the food. After initial hesitation, the rat learns to cope up with the mechanism in order to fetch food. This stimulus, response, reinforcement and repetition is a part of an operant conditioning where reinforcement plays a vital role. In this experiment, the behavior and appropriate response are the two most important factors. So, if the reward is repeatedly withheld, the behavior changes. 
The behavior describes reinforcement in two kinds. First, a positive reinforcement meant reward and praise, while a negative reinforcement meant punishments. Skinner's theory of learning relates to the role of reinforcement in a given situation. Therefore, according to behaviorism, language learning is operant conditioning with positive and negative reinforcement and is learnt by imitation and association. Positive reinforcement increases the possibility of desired response with a positive reward. Skinner, however, did not equate negative reinforcement with punishment. This approach had an essential contribution to learning by habit formation. Skinner demonstrated several ways in which operant behavior played a crucial role in shaping how children learn a language. Skinner's principles emphasize the individual's pace of learning. The behavioristic approach to learning was criticized for several reasons, as this approach equated humans with other organisms. It was questioned that controlled experiments on animals could be equated to the same results on humans in learning situations. The approach did not take into account elements of creativity and no importance was given to genetic inheritance. This approach was far more artificial than being natural. Language acquisition is more a matter of maturation than imitation or reinforcement, which became one of the most significant limitations of language acquisition in the 1960s. And this led to an alternative proposal from the generative account of language. This position of the behaviorist was rejected explicitly by Noam Chomsky that language should be taught as a verbal behavior and suggested that the learner of every language has an innate learning capacity for language which enables him to construct any theory or set of rules about language even with limited exposure to the language. Language learning is considered as an inner psychological functioning by the cognitive experts. For them, Learning is an active process involving a change in the cognitive structure with a conceptual understanding. Following this, the mentalists, including Chomsky, they claimed that a child learns his first language through cognitive learning and not how Skinner describes it. According to Chomsky, a child is born with the capacity to work out the underlying system of sounds, which he hears around him and can construct his own grammar. According to him, this mental grammar is a part of child's cognitive framework that he hears and stores in his brain. For Chomsky, language is a complex medium that a child can acquire in a short period. This is possible only because the child possesses an innate mental capacity that helps him process all language that he hears, which he calls the language acquisition device or LAD. So according to Chomsky, in early years of generative linguistics, the term language acquisition device was introduced to refer to a model of language learning in which the infant is credited with an innate predisposition to acquire linguistic structure. This view is usually opposed to those where language acquisition is seen as a process of imitation learning or as a reflex of cognitive development. A child uses language acquisition device to make sense of what he hears around him by deriving data from speech and the kind of sentences being used and how are they being constructed. The knowledge gained is then used to produce sentences that start a process of trial and error. The child eventually learns a set of generalized rules governing how sentences are formulated. If you have a look at the illustration of the language acquisition device, this is quite visible. When Chomsky talks about the rules, 
He means the unconscious rules in a child's mind, enabling the child to make grammatical sentences in his language. Therefore, mentalism looks at language learning as an innate ability, where a child automatically creates his own mental grammar followed by sentences. The cognitive approach gives importance to cognition, that is the perception in learning. Learning is a change in the cognitive structure which occurs in three ways. Differentiation, generalization and restructurization. Differentiation begins by differentiating aspects of oneself and one's environment. For example, in the early years of a child, he confuses every four-legged animal as a dog. It is only with time that the child learns to differentiate between them. Also with time, he builds differentiation and categorizes the concepts based on specific underlying characteristics and this is known as generalization. The child first learns to differentiate between various things. For example, let us take the previous example of a four-legged animal where every animal for the child is a dog. But later he learns to distinguish between a dog, a cat, an elephant, a cow or a monkey and further differentiate them from flying animals like birds. So in this manner, the child develops an understanding of the basic concepts or characteristics of a dog and then learns to differentiate it from other animals. Later, he unifies all the concepts in one concept of living beings and thus generalization is reached by the child. The final process is that of differentiation and generalization where individual characters or individual structures are used to accommodate the concepts learned to gain control and link himself with the world. Moreover, this process is called restructurization, where the concept of living things is restructured. Therefore, the behaviorists look at language acquisition as a stimulus response process where language is a conditioned behavior for them. Children learn language by imitation and analogy and language learning is based purely on practice for behaviorists. The role of imitation and reinforcement along with repetition is significant according to the behaviorist. While on the other hand we have the mentalist who look at language as an innate or inborn process and not behavior like any other behavior. Children learn language by applying rules using mental grammar. For the mentalist, language learning is analytical and exposure to language is exceptionally vital. Language acquisition, according to them, is the result of nurture and not nature. Now an alternative account along with this was the model of cognitive development which was proposed by Jean Piaget. He contributed by describing the process of human thinking from infant life to adulthood. According to him, as children grow, there are changes in his intelligence by acquiring language and developing and constructing a mental model of the world. His theory redefines intelligence, knowledge and relationship of the learner to the environment. Intelligence is a continuing process that creates structures. On the other hand, knowledge is an interactive process between the learner and the environment, which is highly subjective during the first few years of a child's life and becomes more objective by adulthood. He believes that learning is a function of specific processes like assimilation, accommodation, equilibrium and adaptation.
Cognition is developed by the establishment of new knowledge or schemes. Or schemas are thought process that are building blocks of knowledge. For example, a baby knows that it must make a noise to express his need for food. Assimilation and accommodation are both processes of the ways of cognitive development. Assimilation is how we use our thought process to interpret a new situation or object. As soon as the child process of thought develops, he tries to apply it to all new situations he comes across. Objects he has never seen. This is possible when a series of cognitive thought process occurs. For example, a child might mistake a cat to be a dog that he might be more familiar with. Assimilation is responsible for the child's ability to act and understand new things in light of what he is already familiar. Accommodation follows assimilation. It is a rearrangement of the thought process or schema to rectify or correct or create a new set of information which fits into his learning of new information. With constant encounters with the environment, such adjustments of internal structures to differentiate characteristics occurs in a child's mind. This often includes reorganizing thinking by his learnings from the environment, which presents itself in different forms, like a contradiction of events or things that do not match the new information that he has gathered. As the child gathers and confronts new situations, such alterations and modifications keep happening. And this process of combining and modifying existing information is known as accommodation. The child accommodates when they understand that not all furry four-legged creatures are cats. The equilibrium is the next stage which follows accommodation in cognitive development. Equilibrium symbolizes a new stage of cognitive development. It is when the child can use assimilation to fit in most of the new information he has learned. So he is continuously adding new schemas to maintain continuous change. It is somewhat a balance between the old and the new. After equilibrium is achieved, adaptation to a new situation that a child encounters every time is an ongoing process. This stage is more connected to the child's environment which helps him organize his life experiences such as adapting to life events. So knowledge is an internal representation of the world that helps individuals understand the world they inhibit. Assimilation is using an existing schema to deal with new object or situation. The learner fits new idea into what he already knows. Here, the schema is not changed but only modified. Accommodation happens when an existing knowledge does not work and needs to be changed to deal with new object or situation at hand. So, the information is altered. And finally, an equilibrium is gained. The child adapts to the environment for future events. For Piaget, intelligence is not fixed. It is adaptive in the sense that it is an ongoing process of constantly adapting to the environment. In this section, we shall also look at the classification of development of cognitive functions in detail starting from the early development of localization in infants during the first year of their life. These four stages are sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operations and formal operations. The sensory motor stage is the first stage of cognitive development that extends roughly from the child's birth to the age of two years. At this stage, a baby can differentiate between the self and objects as they are born with basic action schemes, such as grasping. Therefore, they use these actions to collect information about the world. In this period, children's language is egocentric. 
they talk either to themselves or associate with anyone in the vicinity children see things primarily from their perspective the child forms his basic concepts about the nature of the material world he begins to understand from his environment that objects appear disappear and reappear in different ways from different angles in dark and in light in different colors he also relates to how things appear or look the sounds and noises around him and the different touch of every other object in this stage essentially children see things merely from their perspective from an infant to the appearance of language the mental and cognitive attributes of a child develop characterized by progressive at a position of object permanence the child possesses the ability to look for objects that have been moved from their place or displaced from their vision piaget experiments this by hiding an object under a pillow to see if the baby can find it the next stage of development is the pre operational stage when the child is between the age of 2 to 7 years at this stage the child makes a swift progress in developing the mental schema of language by now they quickly acquire new words and attempt to construct simple sentences accompanied by over generalizations the child can link together and relate to events however their perceptions are limited to a single aspect or dimension piaget in his experiment tests this ability by using containers with liquid in two similar containers he pours the same amount of liquid next he pours the liquid from one of the containers to a bigger container with a wider diameter or surface area In the bigger container the same amount of liquid shows a lower level the child thinks there is less liquid in the third container this depicts that the child uses only one aspect or dimension that is the height or the level to judge the volume of the liquid in the containers the child can talk about what is here and now he also tries to talk about things that happened in the past or future he can also relate to feelings of people around him thus symbolic thought is also depicted by the child in this age group unlike the previous stage where children could see things only from their perspective children also believe at this age that objects are alive whether animate or inanimate the child shows greater flexibility for dealing productively with the world and attaching words to his internal representation makes him feel empowered with limited intellectual abilities he can only focus on one aspect of a situation at a given point in time and this piaget refers to as centering This is also the stage where the conception of acquiring logic takes place. The third stage is the concrete operation stage, characterized by cognitive growth between 7 to 11 years of age. Basic skills of language and acquisition show rapid progress and flexibility. Children can classify, combine and compare objects which are prime characteristics at this age he can also deal with words and associate them with their hierarchies such as rose bud flower at this age the child is more aware than the previous stage but by now he can clearly apply reverse operations in mathematical terms what can be added and subtracted are easily workable for him they can also work um, along with dimensions simultaneously the child can also classify objects based on their common characteristics by this age so by this age 
Children's language development reveals their movement from immature to mature, illogical to logical. This is with respect to thinking skills. Their language also reflects their ability to be center, that is, view things from others' perspective and show characteristics of asking questions and answering them, criticisms and expressing their own feelings. The last stage is the formal operational stage of children aged 11 and above. This age begins at 11 years of age and lasts up to adulthood around 16 years of age. The young adolescents can now manipulate ideas in their mind and work out on mathematical calculations that are complex in nature. Also, they can think creatively and imagine outcomes and in this sense, they can view issues abstractly. We can explore different ways of formulating a problem. Some of the formal operational stages Key characteristics include learners' capability to serve several possibilities, designing a hypothetically possible system and is well structured and followed by empirical verification. They can conceive an imaginary world, accept essentials for the sake of argument, try to generalize things and become conscious of their thinking and provide a suitable justification for their proposition. Therefore, from the first stage where the child cannot demonstrate all these tendencies in every possible situation, he reaches the final stage where he can use this flexibility in all these domains. Nevertheless, Piaget's approach to learning comes with limitations as well. He does not seem to make his terminology very clear to his readers. His work lacks scientific methodology. He lays more emphasis on concepts of relations, ignoring the normal and nominal concepts. Not only is his approach lengthy and time consuming, but he does not involve a direct teaching method. In this session, we have discussed the three major approaches to language acquisition. The various theories should not be seen simply as alternatives, rather each of them offers a partial explanation of the process of language learning by children. Hope this session helped you in acquiring information about how children acquire language and the different theories that are available. Thank you.